This podcast is proud to be part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. Talk Sport. Powered by fans. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the To Holland Back podcast again. Uh, tonight, we've got a very special episode because um, we've got two lovely special guests, Corbin and Max. How are you guys doing? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? All the better for meeting you. Oh, thank you. Yes. And wow. how are you, Max? Because we've, we've met before, haven't we? We have, and you've also been on my channel. So that's yes. it's, it's a bit of a switcheroo today. Well, I'm yeah, well, feeling very good after last night, considering hmm. I got a notification saying Sky Sports football uploaded Hull City highlights. So, yeah, that, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. So, as I'm in the uh, mood for shout outs, um, I'll just say that we're proudly sponsored by Six Yards Out and Pearson's Bar in Hull. But also, you've got your own YouTube channels to shout out. So, uh, Max, uh, where can people find your YouTube channel other than on YouTube? <laughs> really <laughs> um but yeah you can um obviously subscribe to me max tiger hd vlogs tigers talk you name it i've got it kind of um for more updates on my channel you can follow me on instagram max tiger hd official or on twitter at mthd underscore official um there, there w could have been a tigers talk tonight but there was a change of plan um there will be a match day vlog for Rotherham as well. So, Okay, cool. And uh, Corbin, you've got a YouTube channel as well. Do you want to shout that out? Indeed, I do. You can find me on YouTube on, at Corbin C. I've got a Twitch channel as well where I do live streams, Corbin C as well, and Twitter, Corbin C again. Awesome. Those are those are well named. So um, as you've mentioned, uh, it was a fantastic win last night at Blackpool, but um, because we like to, you know, uh, be miserable on this podcast and negative all the time. Let's look back at the um, two previous games first and then quickly move on to something more more fun. Uh, we yeah. lost 2-0 at Huddersfield and then 2-0 against Birmingham. Uh, Max, generally, uh, how did you feel um, after those two games going into uh, last night's match against Blackpool? It's, it's hard to say how I felt in your words but in my words i felt absolutely weakened to the core uh, i couldn't see us winning last night never never mind even scoring um mm. the huddersfield game we could have had at least a goal if not maybe even snuck a, a second one in um long one obviously missing that chance which was really annoying um it wasn't too bad of a game i didn't i thought in in the sense that we attacked the goal. We did attack them and played very good defensively. But once again, it's the set pieces. <laughs> we just can't be bothered. Um, yeah. The thing is with us, we we attack so much. We defend so much. But after time, we're just useless. We are useless. Both one side and the other of the pitch. The Huddersfield game, I mean, going into it, I didn't see us winning it at all. Didn't even, I mean, I thought we'd score, there's that, but the efficiency we have is not consistent enough for us to stay where we were. Obviously, the first goal, as everyone, well, most of us saw, um, couldn't be, I say couldn't be prevented, um coil i mean it's just it's just unlucky really um i mean i was obviously a little bit fuming at the time but i mean what can he do he tried his best mm -hmm. and helic i mean man that, that was a very that was a sloppy goal the first one is unlucky and i think we have been yeah. a bit unlucky with the goals we've conceded um well some of them some of them have been woeful but then luton um that was an own goal off jones Another own goal for Coyle, 
and then the um, Sturt game we lost, I think the uh, first goal was deflected in that. So we obviously haven't played well, but recently we haven't also got the luck um, that some of our performances have deserved. Um, uh, Corbin, what, what was your view on the Huddersfield match? Uh, the Huddersfield match, dreadful, really, is all I can <laughs> say about it. Um, missed chances, we didn't look good on the ball at all going forward. Huddersfield were all over us throughout the game. It really was just... It was a chore to watch, and I don't, I don't like saying it. Hmm. I'm well, just really, yeah, it was a chore to watch. I, I had the um, uh, I mean, I, I'm living in, in Huddersfield at the moment, so it was a nice, easy away game for me to go to and pretend that I was being a really, you know, uh, great supporter going to an away match. But um, it was just down the road, really. Um, and I still wish I hadn't gone because it was it was thoroughly miserable. It wasn't the worst performance. It's just that build up of losing another game and not scoring and um, away from home especially uh, our form seems to be really terrible and uh, but then still I sort of deluded myself into thinking we could get something out of the Birmingham game with it with it being at home and then I think we were a bit unlucky in that because I've written down here in my notes Birmingham was really a, a tale of two halves and um, Max would you agree that we had a good first half and a bad second half? I would I would say I have to agree with that. I thought the first half was very promising. We had many, many chances. Obviously, Pelkas slipping inside inside the last few moments of the first half wasn't great. Slippy G moments, but um it was a good first half. I thought we capitalized on their mistakes, obviously. Um had some great chances to, sh to to strike the ball through. We followed through with that and we got a few chances probably should have been taken more often, but then again, we were playing the right balls through, most of them being offside. Um, but then again, we've we've we have improved. We just can't seem to score, and mm -hmm. I think that's that's our main that that's our threat really. Like our threat should be goals, but realistically, that's our now our threat, uh, their threat. Yeah, our attack is now their threat. So. It's it's a little bit difficult. I've just noticed also that we've lost we've now lost th th three games in a row two nil. We lost mm. Luton, Huddersfield, and Birmingham two 0 That's that's just a little thing I've picked up well, on. We, but we did have again, a win against Wigan in the middle, but yeah, the defeats. Yeah, basically, yeah. I feel like when even when we concede the first goal, I feel like we're still in the game and we play quite well. And then I think usually we're conceding the second goal just before or after half time, and then that just kills us off. And from two goals, we're not, we're not going to come from uh, back from that. Um, and I felt like that it was the case against Birmingham going into the second half. I, I was confident we could get something out of the game. Then you know again defensive uh, issues come to the fore. We concede another goal in like the fifty second minute. Um, so uh, Corbin, what, what did you think went wrong in that second half? Or was it basically well, just the first goal in that second half and then we dropped our heads? Well, I've got the stats up for that game on my phone. Mm -hmm. We were better in the first half than we were in the second half by the looks of things, and which was surprised me because going into the game looking at the lineup, I thought we was going to be very strong in there with Greg Doherty, Cynic, mm -hmm. Pelkas, Oscar, some of our better players on the pitch. But throughout the game, we had two offsides. Um, doesn't really say much, but... It, with uh, less uh, shots, we have zero shots on target and zero shots in the second half. We didn't yeah. make those attacking plays. We didn't get up fair enough in the field. And um, I was sat with Max for that game. I'm not sure if he remembers it, but um, yeah, yeah, we he was. <sighs> that was a pain. Yeah, um, I ended up leaving earlier. <laughs> I didn't see the uh, second. He did. Goal. He did. Was, as soon as I saw the seven minutes of added time, I, I walked out. I was like, we ain't getting anything from this. So it's just a shit. We can't create chances enough. And when we do, we need to capitalise on them because we don't get them enough. Hmm. Well, yeah, it seems that, in, especially in the home matches where we've had a lot of the ball, I think we've had more possession against Birmingham and Luton and Stoke, perhaps. I might be wrong, but uh, and we've lost all of those and we've not scored a goal. Um, at home, so I feel like we're a better counter-attacking team. Um, that's what we were doing earlier in the season. We beat um, Norwich in Coventry with less of the ball, I think, and uh, we were sort of under pressure. Uh, so, yeah, really, I think it is sort of a case of 
we had a, a good first half. I was confident and we, we seem to have improved. That was a very good half. I haven't seen us play much better than that this season. And then, you know, because we're so bad defensively, we concede heads drop. And uh, it was very another, uh, another very disappointing defeat. But last night uh, wasn't. So um, I, I didn't expect us to get anything from this at all. I thought, um, even though Blackpool are just above us in the table, I, I thought, you know, it's an away game. We're definitely going to lose. Um, so, well, I think perhaps uh, the lineup was quite a surprise. Um, not seeing Oscar up front was the biggest shock. Uh, Corbin, what did you? How did you react to the lineup? Because I was quite, quite, I was interested, but not very encouraged. Well, I'll, I'll try and I'll, I'll try and find the lineup here, but the Oscar not Oscar being on the bench was a shock to me. Obviously, the league's top scorer was prolific up in front there for us. Um, seeing um, what well, Fleming was on the bench too, let's see. Um, Mm -hmm. was also kind of shocked because he's been playing with the under-23s for a bit now. He's working his way back in, so I thought maybe injecting him into the squad now a bit too early for him. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, suppose, I suppose we need him to play soon because yeah. Elder's out. I don't know how long Elder is out for, but um, it, I mean, that was certainly another positive from last night was saying that uh, Fleming was back because uh, he played really well last year and it's a shame that most of his career at City's been... Uh, plagued by injuries, but that was one positive. But uh, mm. go on. Um, other, well, due to recent performances, Longman, um, I thought, especially after that thing against Huddersfield, um, I, I thought it was a bit of a shock. I mm -hmm. definitely feel like we do have a bit of better players than him, but I was proved wrong when he scored a goal, even though it was yes, you goal. were a silly tapping. Um, mm. but well, they all count the same, yeah. yeah the they tapping do. is a goal if it's a goal. For us, I don't care how it comes Absolutely. at this point. It's what I said to my mate last night. It's the sort of goal we've conceded a lot as well from a, a, oh, a set piece. Yeah. I think we've got better at attacking them. I think we had a, a decent chance against Birmingham that Oscar almost got into the end two of the rebound and then we've scored against Wigan and Blackpool with them. So I think attacking set pieces, was that was another thing last season we were terrible at, but we seem to have found that form and I think that's helpful because we concede so many. It's hopefully that cancels itself out, really, um, if we're scoring and conceding. Yeah, um, I saw a little stat before this on Twitter. Um, Longman had a 100% dribble success rate, which I found was quite interesting. Uh, that's good. One, uh, but uh, only 33 touches, though, with uh, three shots. It was an uh, interesting night for him. Um, I was going to say, it's not, if he gets 100% dribble success rate, he's not going to have had the ball much. It's, mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that, that is yeah. true. And then, obviously, the other goals coming from Slater and that absolute like, screamer from Doherty. It was just kind of rounded off like uh, something that I believe we deserved after the recent form we've been on. Yeah, I, I think that was a game where we fully deserved to win, perhaps... Uh, other than Wigan, well, the, the first three wins we had under Shotter, I don't think we really deserved those um, outright. But I think Wigan and Blackpool, especially, um, we did deserve to win. We created chances. Pelkas blazed a few over the bar and, and wide, which was a shame. But uh, it was good to you know hang on at two one and then uh, you know finish off with a third goal. Um, I just want to focus more about my um, favourite player, Ryan Longman. Um, unfortunately, none of the regulars are here, so you know. Um, I can't tell them how wrong they are, but um, mm. I mean, presumably you have similar views that Longman hasn't been playing very well, but uh, you know, you look stupid now, don't you? Because he was amazing. And uh, yeah, so just want to mention that he scored a goal and I, th I thought, of course I would say this, but he, he led the line quite well and I can't say it because I think this would be sacrilege, but um, his hold up play was better than... Oscarist opinion at time, uh, at times, but I can't say that, so I haven't said that. Mm. That's just a, uh, you know, nothing. But uh, yeah, I thought he played quite well, and uh, it was it was good for him to get a goal. I think that'll do a lot for his confidence, and um, hopefully we can see how he played, um, you know, more often. Uh, the first half of last season when he was on loan, hopefully he gets back to that form. Um, but as you mentioned, great goal by Greg Doherty. This was his first start for a while, I believe. Um, or, or did he play against Birmingham? I'm not sure. Played uh, he played against oh, Birmingham. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, yeah, right. he started. Well, 
he, he was one of the standouts, I thought. So uh, do you think that midfield we had, starting Doherty and uh, Woods and Seri, is the way forward for City? Uh, I'll open that to anyone uh, else to answer. I've brought down, um, Doc was good throughout the entire game. He's shown that desire. He's running for the ball. So with Slater, we've, those are the kind of midfielders we need. I've noticed Ozan runs for the ball, but sometimes he just doesn't know what to do with it. Seri's, well, Seri's Seri. He's good with the passing. He's plays it to uh, play some good balls at times. Mm -hmm. But I feel like Seri and Slater, those, not so, oh, sorry, so, um, Doc and Slater, those two are probably our best midfielders we have right now. Like no yeah. disrespect to Ozan and Seri, the great players. Like obviously. With that. Um, but uh, Slater, for, for the price you got him at, he's been absolutely amazing so far. He's was amazing last season. He's been great this season. No reason we shouldn't drop him. He unfortunately missed the game out against uh, not Birmingham, but due to his suspension. Um, maybe if he was in that game, it could have gone a different way. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been really impressed with Slater's dribbling. I think that's one of his best strengths. I don't know whether anyone else mentions that. They talk about the passing and the desire and the um, tackling, that sort of thing. But I think Slater and Doherty are, are really good to kind of get us up the pitch, especially Doherty. I'm always surprised at how quick he is. Um, I mean, I always say how quick he is, but then when I see him on the ball, because most players don't really, the first thought is to run forward with the ball, but he does. And I think um, that can really help us get up the pitch. And, um, uh, you know, that was part of why he, he, he uh, ran on and scored that goal, uh, which was fantastic. And it's what his performances have deserved over the last um, well, few games. Uh, so uh, I've got a, a question here because mm. I'm not really sure whether um, you'll agree with it or not. But um, Greaves at left back, uh, he's been oh, at yeah. fault for, um, well, he was at fault for the first goal in a way, letting the cross come in. Um, however, I think towards the end of the game, he sort of, uh, attacking-wise, I think he's always been quite good. Um, when we were playing three at the back, he got forward a lot. So I think going forward, he's, he's, he was playing well there. But um, I think that just highlights the need to get Fleming or Elder back because I'm not really sure whether he's as positionally aware at left-back as he should be. So uh, what do you think about that, Max? Well... Greaves at left back. I mean, I saw it for, but we've seen it for Birmingham. We saw it for Blackpool. I, when he came, when it was announced that he was playing left back, I thought, why? We've got our best centre back, and mo probably one of our most prolific centre backs, in an unfamiliar position. Now, don't get me wrong; it worked on um, against Blackpool. Mm -hmm. Blackpool, not Blackburn. Blackpool. The thing is I have with Greaves, he's, he's always got forward. He's always been that type of player to mm -hmm. have the incentive to push forward, pressure the midfield of the opposition, maybe even pressure the defence. It's what I saw when, before Slater hit his goal in. It's exactly what he did. He was all the way, he was, part, he was on the halfway line, got the ball, ran forward, tried to take a shot on. Obviously, he's a defender, so there's not many chances of him doing that normally um but he even though he may he makes some mistakes at left back he still was as efficient as you could have uh, could have got last night mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that as any disrespect to any any other uh, other of our defenders but the way he's been playing it's it's almost unbelievable to see since our defensive form has been so poor. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the lineup for Blackpool, obviously Greaves at left back, Christie at right back, Coyle out for illness, I was like, okay, that makes that makes interesting sense. I I just thought when I saw Fleming on the bench, I was like, so why is he why is Dawson not playing Fleming at left back? Mm. But to be fair, it seemed to work. Now, Greaves, we wanted Greaves to stay. And yes, he's done well, but we do have to pick on the mistakes. I don't want to be the guy that's always picking on him as negativity, but mm -hmm. we do have to occasionally look at the the opposite side of things. And the mistakes he makes, like, I don't want to say it, 
but I'm probably going to have to. Well, you can say it. They are 100% his fault. Like, mm -hmm. if, well, I say 100%, probably about 90%, simply because the only the only thing, it, exactly, exactly. Now, the un, this isn't no disrespect to Greece, of course, but he he's turning into, when he's at left back, he's turning into Louis Coyle. Out of position constantly. Mm. That's that's no disrespect to Coyle. Don't worry, I'm not not well, disrespect. It, well, it is, but hey, 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 <laughs> calm it. No, but I mean, there were there were some negatives, but we do have to take the positives out of the game because this is our first away win. I believe it was on Sky, seeing Sky Sports. Uploaded. Well, not not officially, but it doesn't count into the uh, to the statistics. But it was because it was a uh, midweek game. But all of the midweek games were on Sky, so we don't count those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, as, as I've said, it's just it was surprising to the eye once I first saw the lineup and said, "Why are we playing Greaves at left back?" Mm. Well, I but, suppose Fleming probably isn't fit enough yet. Um, but I, I do think hopefully we'll be an improved team with yeah. Fleming at left back and Greaves back where he should be. I, I don't think he had a, a poor game. He has made a few mistakes mistakes recently, but hopefully he'll take confidence from that because I think he grew into that position, um, especially going forward. Um, he's always been good at that. So really, I think this team um, and all the defence just needs a clean sheet to give them some confidence. We just need a team to be really rubbish against us. Hopefully that's Rotherham. On Saturday, because I think uh, you know, going forward, we've not always been great, but we have scored goals and we've got a, a good striker in Oscar. So I think we just need a clean sheet to give them a bit of confidence, and hopefully that will improve their performances. Um, do you have anything to add to that, uh, Greaves at left back defensive debate, Corbin? Um, well, he got a yellow card. He, I'm not against it. Uh, it's always good to try and try players out in a new position, see if they're comfortable with it, try and mm -hmm. expand where they can play, especially if like players like Fleming and Elder are out. Um, yeah. It was an interesting. It's an it was an interesting call. I'm yeah, he'll have, he'll have le certainly learned some stuff um, to improve his game at, at centre back, perhaps as well. So I yeah, kind of I, yeah. I like what you said about putting players in, out of position to see sort of you know help them grow and that sort of thing. I think that, yeah. that could work. Um, and then the last thing I, I've written in my notes, which I just want to mention, because I think Pelkas on the ball dribbling, um, his little neat touches are, are really great. I just think um, he's a bit like Grzycki at times and Ali are. They've got that flair. Um, and this isn't not about them working back and defending. It's about just the end product, because there were a few times he got into a great position and, and especially the one he tried to uh, shoot at tight angle went, miles over i just think he needs to work on his finishing i mean that's not really a question i just think that's a fact um but hopefully i think we are starting to see him get more involved in games and he's playing at a sort of more central position at times so um do you agree with that uh yeah i i agree with that um obviously you mentioned aliyah he's fast he's pacey he can get up the ball lacks the finishing much like pelkas mm. he if pelkas had the finishing he could bag goals this season. He's already, he's already scored one goal. He's opened up mm -hmm. his chats for us. Um, Ali has scored a few last seasons. Um, unfortunately, he's been out for most of this season. Oh, well, one. One uh, goal. One goal. Only one goal. That's surprising. It feels like he could have got yeah. more, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that was... just shows how much um, the other parts of his game, that you know, those are strong points because we love him even mm. though he hasn't scored a lot. So, um, yeah, hopefully we start seeing Pelkas get on the score sheet more. Um, so, shall we look ahead to the Rotherham United game? Yes, let's go. That would be great. Mm. So, um, well, generally, uh, they're 13th. They have a, a very good home record and they're overachieving massively. Of course, they are. Um, this is going to be the Tom Eves derby because um, he's there. Apparently, Rotherham fans, um, I haven't really checked this myself, but I, I think I've heard that they really don't like him, <laughs> um, which was sort of the case with us. Mm. Um, but I feel like sometimes you're allowed to hate him because he was not very good. And then sometimes uh, you're not allowed to hate him because he put in a lot of effort. So, I mean, he'll definitely score probably on Saturday. Definitely, probably. Um, but how, how do we that see this game so going? Because I'm quite, I'm quite confident after the way we played against Blackpool and the first half against Birmingham. So 
Uh, Max, how do you see the game at Rotherham going? Right. I've I said on my Tigers talk that I was very having very high confidence for this game, mm-hmm. even without uh, a loss or win. Um, I obviously said three one Blackpool, which was funny. Um, I said two one. Now, I may have changed my mind. I'm not sure, but um, at the moment, I'm thinking I'm more confident than I was after Birmingham. Mm-hmm. Now, I know Rotherham sound like an easy team to beat, but they're not. They're really not this season, and they're proving themselves, which, fair play to them. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, I didn't I didn't expect it from them this season. They're, I mean, they're way higher than... Um, uh, I thought they'd be about 10 places lower, really. They're 13th. I thought they'd be in the relegation zone, um, especially after yeah. losing their manager. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll be a tough game. Uh and we haven't got, um, you know, Tommy Eves because he scored a hat trick against them the last time he played there, I believe. Um, but I, I, I'm confident as well, Max. I think we've played well, especially against Blackpool. We we controlled the game really well. It'll be interesting to see whether um, there are many changes, whether Fleming comes in, perhaps, whether he's ready, um, or of course, I think the major one. Uh, you always say don't change a winning team, um, which you know. I mean, if we don't change it, I feel like when they say that, if we don't change it, then I know it's kind of a bad thing, but it's kind of a good thing because that it because they've seen that we've beat Blackpool, mm-hmm. so their th- their mindset is going to be thinking right. They're not going to change their team up here, but the reason I th- think we lost uh, uh, lost won last night, I I was out of the world. There. We definitely won. Um, so, even, even though we won last night, I really do feel like it was those three red cards. It was, I, I think it was those three red cards that did it for Blackpool because Ekpiteta and the two others, I don't know the names, um, but Ekpiteta probably would have been a little bit more solid um, and probably would have held us back a little bit more than we than we were. But we won't talk about that. Um, but then again, like, you can change a winning team, mm-hmm. but there are some risks and consequences. Now, and we know that for a fact because we did it last season and the earlier games this season. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I do, I do feel more confident, as I said, um, after the Blackpool game. Obviously, Rotherham are eleventh. Yeah, eleventh um, from what I've seen. Um, I have to check that. Uh, they are 11th. Uh, you said they were 13th. 13th oh. uh, currently occupied by another surprise package of the season, Sunderland. Um, oh, well, they're both, uh, I wasn't, they're I wasn't both newly promoted teams who play in red them. and white. Yeah, I wasn't expected. I wasn't expecting Sunderland to be that low, so I'm not surprised they're there. Um, they are a good side. Um, it's going to be fun to face them in December. Um, mm. But, yeah, I mean, it's... It's going to be a tight game. I know that, and that's the only reason why I'm thinking of changing my prediction from a t- uh, from a two one. Now, were you from- saying two one to United or to City? Who do you think, Nathaniel? Well, I mean, you were saying you were doing this prediction after we just lost to Birmingham, so I was assuming you meant Rotherham were going to win. Well, okay, fair enough. Um, okay, um. Anyway, so you think we'll win? Well, that's good. I do think we'll win. Now, I hope we I do. Don't think it'll be, I don't think it'll be easy. It will definitely not be easy. Now, Rotherham have beaten Stoke away. They've beaten Huddersfield at home. Yeah, they're in decent they've form. Got, they've got two wins and two draws out of their past six. This that We've got two wins and four draw, losses, sorry, We've probably got more losses down the line there, but that's mm-hmm. only our six games. Those games have come with Wigan, which is probably the most expected game to win, and then Blackpool, mm. who but weren't I think exactly it's more, that far ahead. Of it, it's more of the, about the way we've performed, though. I think in the Championship, the, the difference yeah. in quality, you know, around the mid-table teams, and uh, Rotherham have been playing well, but they don't have lots of uh, players on paper, you'd think. 
are really great. Um, so I think I agree it'll be tight. And usually we've come out on the wrong side of that those games because we concede from a, a set piece or something. So, um, I mean, I, I was playing devil's advocate with the don't change a winning team because I think you probably... I mean, Longman scored and I wouldn't change it because I think Longman should start every game. But um, I think, yeah, bringing in the top or joint top goal scorer, best opinion, is probably a decent idea. So, uh, Corbin, um, what would you change if you were... Andy Dawson or another, you know, the newly appointed Hull City manager. Um, what would your lineup be for Saturday? Um, obviously, I'd I'll, I'll love Baxter in goal. I don't mind who's in goal. I think they've both been very solid this season for what yeah. we've seen of them. For the defence, um, depending if he's fit, I want to see Fleming on left back. I want to see mm -hmm. how he's going to cope this season, how well he's going to be. Um, obviously, he's going to be a bit fatigued and a bit, you know, rusty to start off with, but it'll be a good way to... Um, Work, him, work himself back in here. Um, I want to see uh, Sean McLaughlin too. I want to see him. Uh, I want to see more of him this season. I haven't seen him at all. Waka, waka, waka. Yeah. Um, we haven't seen him much this season. Um, mm -hmm. Greaves, centre back. Um, That's all. How, how long is a coil? How long is coil out for? I don't, I don't know. Coil, coil is predicted to resume this weekend. He was, off, he's just he, Ill, was, isn't he? he was off for illness and is returned to training this week and is in contention, according to my notes, is in contention for this 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 after, Saturday uh, afternoon's fixture. So <laughs> then, yeah, I'd like uh, I'd like Coyle thing. I'm going to go for like a four three three here, but obviously that's just basic. Um, I feel like Everyone's Doc basic, Slater, Doc Slater, and Seri would be my go to midfield right now. Yeah. Uh, with Pelka, Cynic, and Oscar up front. I feel like that would be a <laughs> solid lineup. That's a good front three, isn't it? I think that's the front three that they were sort of planning on having, or maybe yeah. with Pelkas in behind and uh, Ali on the wing, but with the players fit, I think that's that's fairly decent. Um, I mean, personally, I think I'd go Baxter. I don't know whether um, Fleming will be fit because, you know, I, I don't want to change the winning team too much, so I'll go the same back four. Um, yeah. Basically, I think my the only change you could really make is Oscar in. Um, I don't think, uh, I think even if Kyle isn't fit, I think Christie's done okay recently, so I, I'd start him. And uh, I really like the way that the midfield controlled the game and there were lots of good passing moves. I watched the highlights back and just some of the passing we were doing was, you know, really impressive and it was, it was good to watch because usually we just lump it or give it away in our own, uh, you know, half. So that was much improved. Um, and then I guess um, we can't drop Doherty and he was sort of playing further forward or, or Slater was. And I think that worked. So I'd have um, Oscar. I think he's a top goal scorer. I think you have to play him. And I can't drop Longman. So I guess I dropped Pelkas maybe, even though I, th I said he was doing really well. Yeah. Um, I mean, that doesn't really make any sense. I'm very curious to see what the lineup will be. I think there's a few areas that could change um because even though we did win i think there's there's things to improve on um i was going to mention this a little bit earlier um but um i messed up so um what are your two opinions because uh, I, I don't really know what they are on the whole managerial situation at the moment um did you think that uh or corbin i'll ask you first what yeah. did you think of shotter going at the time he did uh no it was Personally, I saw it coming. First, I think everyone saw it coming from a mile away. Results mm -hmm. weren't going our way. Looking back, was inc was incredibly lucky to get wins against Norwich, draw against Burnley. Um, don't get me right. I don't want to say he's a bad manager because there were spells, spells where we did look all right-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it was his time to be like the championship manager. He needed some sort of experience before going into what. Some people argue to be one of the toughest leagues in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the managerial situation, Dawson Ball, I'm mayor with it. We've mm -hmm. won some, lost some, but we can't win every game. Can't expect to win every game, especially in the league we were in. Um, Ajahn's taking his time with it. Obviously, some people may see that as a good thing. Personally, I would forget like to get manager in as soon as possible yeah, because without a true leader in this squad we're going to continue losing and lots of no respect to Dawson play some good football at times especially like we saw at Blackpool but we need that person who can lead the squad who can encourage the players who can you know like what to do 
because Dawson's only been an assistant manager and an interim manager well, for now. So he doesn't really have the experience under his belt manager at, uh, what was it, Scunthorpe, I believe. And that's all the kind of experience he's really had. So he's not the best suited for the job at the moment, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think Schotter went at the, uh, the, the right time in a way. I, I would have given him more time, but I think the way that we've played after it, we haven't really improved, so perhaps, I mean, perhaps the issues we've got go beyond who the manager is. But um, we have, you know, won two games. I don't know whether we would have won with with Schotter in charge. Still, uh, I think it was a, a poor decision not to sack him immediately after the Swansea game, because we we should have a new manager by now. Mm. Um, we should have had one over the international break. I know Adjun was in that accident, but he should he could have sacked him before we had the accident, and that would have been fine. Um, but I think uh, it didn't help cause sacking him on the day of the game against Luton. I think Dawson's done okay. Has it been five games, two wins, three defeats? It's, uh, you know, six points from five games is, yeah. I mean, it's okay. It's a, it's a tiny bit of stability. I think if we get a good result against Rotherham, I think it'll have been a, a decent enough decision to, to have him around. Um, we've got a few comments on, uh, the, uh, you know, Dawson as a manager. Uh, in Ian says, looking at the coaches we have brought in, or uh, we've been, uh, uh, well, looking at the coaches we have brought in with Dawson, why didn't Shots get that help? Well, yeah, maybe, maybe um, one of the main reasons why we won against Blackpool because we brought in that new um, coach. I can't remember his name. Pardo, is it? Mm. Perhaps, perhaps uh, something else would uh, we could have done. Was bring in a new assistant coach. I saw something on Corbin's. Instagram story about that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm I'm not saying. Too, I'm, exactly, I'm not, not going to say yeah, exactly what it said. But I'm not. I'm not too pleased. Know. I'm not too. I'm not too pleased with that appointment. Uh, I'm, I, I, was, I, I don't even know what role he's playing as. He, they brought him in and they've put him as this like technical sporting. Well, I guess analyst. it's sort of football director, but yeah, I mean, lots of clubs I mean, have sporting analysts. It's not one we really understand what they do, but presumably. Hopefully he's doing something important, and hopefully he does well. Um, I, I was like again, I don't know what he's doing or what the thing he's been brought in to do is, or how it's going to benefit the club. Because I've never heard of it before at a football club. Mm -hmm. I've heard people saying, "Oh, like you saw Swansea at the Swansea game; they had coaches on like the tablets and stuff, analysts and stuff." Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't really have any of that. <laughs> so hopefully, <laughs> if he's going to be doing that, you know, analyzing the game, seeing where we can, what we can do, and what where we're going wrong. Hopefully he can bring some uh, positives to the club and mm -hmm. uh, improve the squad. Yeah, okay. Well, Joshua here is commenting the major question. Uh, hey, lads, who would you like to see as our new manager? Uh, I think that's a big question. Um, Max, out of the names that have been linked so far, um, who's been the one that uh, you've been most excited about? I, I don't know anymore. Because at the moment it's it's hard to choose a manager for me with throughout the whole managerial period we've had. Um, obviously, going back to what we were saying about Shorter Avalade, wrong time, wrong time. I mean, right time in terms of results, but wrong mm -hmm. time in terms there was a game eight out. No, not even that. Six hours later. Yeah, it was five timing. and a half, if not six hours later, maybe even eight. I don't know, but and then another game on the Tuesday or the Wednesday as well. So, yeah, it's two games preparing for that they would probably have been preparing for, you know, over those two weeks in the international break. And then you change coach, then I wasn't happy with that really. Um, mm -hmm. and it didn't really help because we lost against Luton. So, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, but I mean, yeah. I don't know who we're really being linked with at the moment. Uh, it's going a little I've, bit quiet. I've currently forgotten simply because there's been all this, <laughs> all this random stuff about oh this person's being linked, this person's being linked. Oh, this person was almost our manager. It's like yeah, just pick wasn't. the manager and then yeah. try and find him. Um, it by seems the way, to have been. Very, it's Barry Pardo, um, performance strategy coach. Right. Okay. Thank you. But um, people disagree with me on this one. But I, mm. even though it's a 
probably not the best decision for us. I would kind of like to see how Deitch Ball would work for us. Mm. Now, a, a lot of people have been saying, oh, Deitch Ball's just boring. Deitch Ball won't work with us. Like, Just give it a shot. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be the best football we'll ever play, but we've got to look at the positive with Deitch coming in. He's got experience in the Championship and the Premier League. He's got experience all around with Burnley. He's been at Burnley for about a decade. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how long it was, but I'm going to go set sort of time. But Deitch would be a good appointment. Now, I'm I not mean, saying that because he's just he he's just the life of football at the point. Like, in my opinion, Deitch would be the best option because he's got experience with Burnley, who's in the same league, so that's kind of fun. Uh, and also, it's it's just the fact that he's got experience not only in the Championship, but in the Premier League. Yeah. And that's obviously <laughs> even harder than the Championship. But he's got, he's got a lot more talent than most of our managers. I mean, obviously, I Andy Dawson, no disrespect to Dawson, he's done great as a man interim. But from all the names that we've been linked with, it's either him or I think it's Corbran, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, I think Corbran's perhaps a little bit more realistic. I mean, I think Dyche yeah. might want to go to the Premier League. But, I mean, I- I'd say we don't really know whether he'd play boring football with us. I think he'd definitely help the defence. Um, that would certainly be something. But he- he's not had the players at Burnley to play uh, attractive attacking football, but he does here. So, um, you know, if he did come in, or someone like that who's more of a defensive coach... I think the main thing is sorting out the defence and hopefully the goals will take care of themselves um, with players like Belkas and Oscar. But uh, I mean, what I about you, Corbin? What, what sort of manager do you think we should be looking for? Is it um, someone who's got experience abroad like Pedro Martins had or should it be someone who's managed in this league? Uh, just <laughs> first like to say, well, why would uh, Deitch want to come to us in the position yeah. we're in uh, unless he's Ashen's going to give him like a golden ticket for money and like a mm. new car, a new fancy villa in Turkey or something. Well, he might I do. S- <laughs> if he I does, mean, he's like vanilla jello. Like, we don't know these things. Sort he's of thing him. he would do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so things when we tried to get Scott Twine that he flew him out to thing. But why would yeah. he want to come to us in our current climate? What, like, he, we're struggling yeah, near the relegation zone. Like, if there's no, he wouldn't want to go there to, uh, you would like to go. Well, probably like to go to a top team. Might like that's well, going to no, be. That's, that's that's the thing though. Like you say, you want he'll want to go to a top team. We are a top team if we can actually use our performances in the right way. Now, it may seem that oh, Deitch wants to go to a top team because, like with us, he he wouldn't want to come to us because we're so low down. The the point of a manager is, is to improve a side. And mm-hmm. with Deitch, I feel like that's why that's the only reason I say with him because he he will improve us to his playing style. He will mm-hmm. match us with what he wants to play. We will go along with his orders and hopefully get more results that are actually beneficial to us rather than mm-hmm. the opposite way around. Yeah. Now, it, if Deitch comes to us, brilliant. If he doesn't, then I don't care because it wasn't I mean, really really. I, I don't think he w- he will, but uh, yeah. it's certainly an interesting choice. And uh, I think I think Hull always... City is an a, an exciting project for a manager to take up. I mean, yeah. we are doing poorly at the moment, right. but uh, we have one of the bigger budgets in the league. We 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 spent I think that the third great. most this summer. There are good yeah. players here. Um, I mean, maybe off the field. I mean, Ajin clearly hasn't been picking the team because he would never have dropped Oscar and played Longman up front and he grooves at left back and, and Doherty right wing or whatever we did the other day. Um, but I think it is an interesting project for a, a, a top manager to come in and see what they could do. Um, I think Corbran, uh, I mean, I, I'd like to see him initially when it was linked. I, I wasn't too fussed. I think we missed a, a trick just getting Carl's Carvajal, though. I think he's a good coach and we seem to have dumped him for Martins and then that didn't work out. So, I think we'll probably have a manager by the time we play Blackburn next week, but um, it'll kid certainly be interesting quit. to see. Kid, in. <laughs> kid mm. for a quit. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I'll bring it will certainly be five minutes for that. That's fun. Mm. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Andy Dawson ends his Hull City tenure because I, I, unless perhaps we're in like 10 0 and, and he gets the job and a permanent deal, <laughs> I, I, I do imagine that'll be the, the last game. So, um, I think we've mentioned most things, unless there's anything else you want to mention, but I'd, otherwise, we'll I'd just like strong to, uh, predictions. I'd just like to uh, that my personal preference for a manager would be probably someone overseas someone mm-hmm. who's probably I don't, like not managing a top league because if you count well pedro martins he, the greek league isn't really a top league only real mm-hmm. credentials the champions league he did beat arsenal 2-1 at the emirates but he probably would be my favorite right now to win uh to get the job pedro martins even though it's kind of gone cold there's mm-hmm. still are some rumors kicking around that yeah he's interesting. There was that Turkish coach who was at the um, at the black was it Blackpool? No, it was was it Blackpool? I'm not sure which game, but there was that Turkish coach, which people are saying that uh, they're coming to check out Ozan and uh, uh, Sinek. So uh, yes, well, he that's the Turkish uh, international manager, isn't it? So he's just yeah. seeing how how, how well maybe, they're playing. Maybe I mean, neither of them started. I was saying maybe Ajin might have some plans trying to persuade him to come to the club, so then he can uh, the Turkish link there. But it, for me, it's obviously for, obviously for me, it's obviously going to be an overseas coach, like because I don't believe there's that many English coaches that are of our pedigree that would you know want to come to Hull or mm-hmm. manage the team. Okay, yeah, I think it probably will be a foreign coach. That seems to be the markets Agent's more interested in yeah. in looking in. Of, yeah. of course. The only thing I want to add, real quick, before we get into mm-hmm. like the lineup predictions, I mean, we've already said our lineup predictions, but like, I wouldn't be fussed with the same team that we played last night. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, I wouldn't. But the big thing for me, I want to see Macarin, don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. the player I really want to see back in the team mm-hmm. is Ingram. Now, yeah. I know people say Bax has been on good form, besides the obvious hip to do's. Mm, he's done all right. He's, he's done all right. I mean, Ingram has started us off well. He may, mm-hmm. he's, he's got the, well, I say, he used to have the top saves in the championship. Yeah, if he was very him. good. And he got dropped for Baxter, which is probably the right time for him because he did get dropped at the right time. Um, but, I want to see him come back. No, there's nothing against Baxter here. I just want to see how Ingram would perform against clubs. Well, say again, perform against clubs, perform after he's been dropped. He's obviously mm. had time to recover, recuperate, rethink about what he can do within the next games he play plays. But he is probably the only player that I'm looking forward to see back in the lineup simply because he did well for us at the start he's consistent enough to keep us keep the opposition out as much as he can but it's it all depends on what the manager sees I mean it'd be great to see him back in the lineup because I think he needs that boost as well as just sitting on the bench because he's been on the bench since what has it been since the? I don't know which game it was. Stoke maybe one before Stoke something maybe something like that. Yeah, and I just feel like it's his time to return now. I don't want. I don't. It's not that I don't want Baxter in goal. It's the fact that I want Ingram to return and just mm. ha- see how he plays. Now yeah. I'm not going to change goalkeeper, which is weird yeah. since I've just said all that. I am going to go with Baxter for this game and then keep Ingram for a later date, which I will stress when I get to it on Tigers Talk next week. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I'm going to go with a back four of Coyle if he returns, um, Jones, Greavesy, and Fleming, because mm-hmm. I do think so. Well, wait. haven't we done this already? Yeah. That you guys have. You guys mm-hmm. have. Uh, I haven't. Um, middle three. I as long as it's somewhat, it's, as long as it's players that, that can actually do well, I don't care. <laughs> um, mm. I do think Docs and Slater should be in there. Mm-hmm. 
to, to be fair, it's either Seri or Tufan, but I think Woods should start. I think yeah. Woods I, start. I don't want to switch it up too much after the Blackpool game. I think that midfield, like, it wasn't a trio. It was more like a, a, a quartet. Yeah. That yeah. worked really well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the lineup from last night, I, I'll, I'll get it up now because I've literally got it here, but Seri and Woods started. Slater, Doherty and Pelkas were in behind Longman. Now, the same fo same formation for me. However, Slater drops back to where Seri is mm -hmm. in centre defensive mid with Woods. Doherty stays up with Seri. Now, it, Pelkas will start for me. Only issue is Longman. Now, I don't want to drop him, but I'm afraid you're going to have to. But you do want to drop him, yeah. <laughs> it's well, it's going to have to happen. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's not... It wouldn't be a huge it. shock. I mean, Oscar's nah, nah. our top scorer. You imagine it's probably more just because he wanted to give him a rest, see what Longman offered. Mm, yeah. But um, I think, you know, at some point you might want to bring on off Oscar if that's not working and see how it works with Longman. But, yeah, I think um, there's lots of variations of what the lineup mm. could be that I think I'd be fairly happy with. Um, shall we move on to our school predictions for Robin? Yes. yes we uh, what about you, Corbin? You go first. Right. So I've got down a 2-1 win for City. I just feel like it's going to be a very closely contested game. I feel like Rotherham are going to get off the bat very good. They're going to score first. We work our way into the game like we've done previously. Um, and just to like, we'll just click. Like We've kind of gelled already in like a sense mm, that we've hopefully. played the squad. Oh well, yeah, hopefully, because if we haven't, then... Yeah, um, but I feel like uh, we'll be good. We'll be better in the second half than we will be in the first half, and that's where we'll get our goals. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Max? You've already said is it a two-one City win? Well, here's where I'm a bit stuck now. Um, it was a two-one City win. I have to say, I've changed it. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't want to be like this, but I'm going to have to be. Now, I said 2-1 because I was very confident. But considering Rotherham have been doing well this season, I think it won't be a miserable ending. It'll be kind of a relieving ending, if you will. Rotherham United 2, Hull City 2. Now, we mm. will go first. No. Yes, we will score first. They will score twice. Mm. Once in the first, once well, in the second. And yeah, I'm not. I'm not expecting you to be mystic and getting the exact, you know, timing yeah. of the well, goals. And no, that no, 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 but for me, I've changed it from a 2-1 to 2-2 two, two, simply because I think it's going to be a tight game, but I do see many goals in it. With the way Rotherham played against Huddersfield, I feel like they have the ability to score goals. They have mm -hmm. the right amount of balance in their team to play for, more forward than they used to. So in that case, it is that is hence the reason why I've gone with it. 2-2 two, two draw. It's not, okay. it's just simply because I, f I just think it's a game that deserves a Desmond, if not a win for us. So, mm, yeah. a 2-2 two, two, and hopefully a good match day vlog for me. <laughs> yeah, mm. I, I agree with you. I think it, it could be a draw. Um, I think we played really well against Blackpool and hopefully we carry that over into Rotherham. Um, it's another away game so we can have the sort of uh, same sort of a system um, that worked in the previous away game. Uh, I think Rodham probably a better team, um, probably more solid, um, much higher up in the table than um, than uh, Blackpool. So um, I think I think we might be able to get a goal. I think uh, we'll probably concede from a set piece and uh, it'll be a tight game. Um, I'm going to go one one. I mean, Ian Ian has said uh, commented it's going to be nil nil. I mean, I'd love that because I think typical, we really need the clean sheet. Typical um, to be honest. City. Typical city, yeah. in from a set mm. piece. <laughs> yes, but... Starry2006 also says, hopefully we get a clean sheet. And Ethan says, 2-1 to City. We do it here. Woo! Uh, Another thing like... is, 
Xavier Simons, I'm pr- I just want to say, Corbin, sorry about that. No, sorry. Um, Xavier Simons proudly made his debut against Birmingham. I mean, it's kind of a shit one, but in terms of the scoreline, but good debut. I thought he played well. So, I mean, I won't be surprised if he gets put in. Um, I would be. I, I, yeah. I don't think he's done enough to to get into the starting eleven. To be honest, yeah. But, uh, well, he, no, he might come off the bench. You got to consider he's not he's not played at all the season so far. Yeah. I mean Vale. Well, I mean Vale. I would say the same for Vale, but he's injured, so it's not really help. But another player I'd like to see when he get, comes back from injury. Another two, Salah and Traore. Which Traore is kind of yeah. a push because of Traore is probably a, a way off yet, but yeah, Salah, he's after Christmas. That should be October. I, th- I think Salah was supposed to be back soon, so hopefully we'll be off. Salah, soon. Salah will be back next month, according mm-hmm. to my reports. Okay, um, but at the moment, I just I I don't care if we win, brilliant. Because yeah. I would like to celebrate a goal, at yeah. least one. By the way, just want to mention to everyone, if no one already, know, if every, if not not everyone didn't notice, we have sold out. Da-da. Yeah, sold out at Rotherham, yeah. so it should we be a, out, we a good atmosphere. Blackpool. We sold out Rotherham. I don't know how we yeah. sold out Blackpool because there was hardly any buzz there, but mm. we sold out Rotherham. So yeah. see what we can do, and hopefully, hopefully they can back the lads. Doesn't backfire. Exactly. Uh, well, yeah. Ho- hopefully, we get another three points. Uh, what were you going to say, Corbin? Uh, what I was going to say is that uh, Rotherham isn't an easy place to go through. Just look at most of their good results; they have come up. Uh, the New York Stadium. Yeah. So, like fifth, fifth in the home table, I think I, I, I saw earlier. Yeah. So they're yeah, obviously good at the New York Stadium. I'm not sure how, what their home attendances are like, but with us selling out, maybe if, I think they should. I hope they get like a bring a good home attendance, and it'll be you know good atmosphere, mm-hmm. and it'll hopefully boost the teams. You know, play them a little bit better. You know, give them that motivation to the, or hopefully bring back the three points to City. Mm-hmm. If not, if not the one, honestly, a win or a draw will take it at this point. We've considered yeah. where we are in the table. I, I think avoiding defeat um, at a, a tough away ground to go to would be uh, very solid. So, uh, yeah. thank you very much for coming on. You've both been uh, great, um, and uh, I don't really you think there's anything you. else. You've been a great host. Oh, thank you very much. That's that's the nicest thing someone said to me <laughs> uh, the last few hours, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. Come on, don't be like that. Yeah. So um, thank you very much for joining us, everyone who's commented. And uh, we'll be back um, hopefully for another preview for the Backburn game and probably next Thursday to hopefully talk about another beautiful City victory and uh, another fantastic Ryan London performance, as we saw on Wednesday. So thanks again for joining. Thanks, Corbin. And thanks, Max. And we'll be back soon.